So straight away, I am going ahead with my um, presentation, Surgical Management of CA Cervix. I'll be covering this topic uh, under these headings, Introduction, Diagnosis, Staging, Management, Surgery, Prognosis, and Summary Conclusion. So to introduce CA Cervix, let us know the global burden of the disease. Uh, it is the fourth most common female malignancy. Worldwide, almost 6 lakhs, 4,000 new cases we get every year. And there are 3 lakhs, 42,000 deaths annually. This is according to Globocan 2020. In India, uh, we know it is the second most um, common female malignancy after CA breast. And 12% of all female malignancy is CA cervix. So now we know the uh, burden of the disease. Um, so here what comes into our mind always is prevention or screening. The screening and preventive aspect of CA cervix has already been covered in the last CME by uh, Rujuta Fuke ma'am and Kamal ma'am. So uh, this being an extension of that, I'll be directly uh, coming to the uh, so, uh, cancer part of it. Uh, here we are not covering the preventive and screening aspect of CA cervix. So coming directly uh, to the uh, topic, uh, how does uh, CA cervix present. So here my uh, thing is never complete without a bit shero shairi. So I'll uh, just uh, tell you that CA cervix we can always say it is like this share very well uh, apt uh, for CA cervix. Nahi aati to yaad unki mahino tak nahi aati. Nahi aati to yaad unki mahino tak nahi aati. Magar jab yaad aate hai to aksar yaad aate hai. So what we miss is the preventive and screening aspect. The uh, CA cervix when it comes it is already in the uh, late stage, advanced stage. So the symptoms which we get, they are mostly in the uh, last stage of uh, 3 and 3A, 3B and uh, stage 4. So it is discharge per vaginum, bleeding per vaginum and in advanced stage it is pelvic pain, backache, pressure symptoms pertaining to bowel bladder. So uh, how do we evaluate a patient of uh, invasive carcinoma cervix? We have to take a detailed history because our treatment is going to uh, depend on the FIGO staging. And FIGO staging as of CA cervix, as we all know, is basically dependent on the clinical examination, the clinical findings. And accordingly, we stage the disease and then accordingly, we go ahead the management part of it. So we have to take detailed history, physical examination, bi-manual and rectovaginal examination to know the size of the lesion, uh, the extent of the lesion, the volume of the lesion, whether it is parametrially involving uh, parametrium or not, or uh, it is involving the uh, bladder and rectum uh, or not. So what are the investigations which we are going uh, to do in such patients which are going to be of help to us? Uh, CBC, RFT, LFT as we have to do for each patient as a um, uh, pre-op evaluation. X-ray chest, uh, um, they say to do, uh, to rule out the lung metastasis. IVP or CT to determine the kidney function and to rule out ureteral obstruction by tumor. Cystoscopy and proctoscopy or barium enema to know whether it is involving the bladder or rectum or not. This is all uh, limited to uh, the centers where resources are limited. Nowadays, uh, better uh, imaging modalities and investigation modalities are available. So we al always take help of them to stage the disease, uh, such as pelvic USG to know the tumor size and parametrial spread, uh, abdominal USG to know the hydro, whether hydronephrosis is there or not as we all know that irrespective of the volume or extent of the lesion, if there is hydronephrosis, straightway it goes into stage 3B. 
we have to do ct of each and every patient because they say uh, sensitivity of ct is 44% and specificity 93% in detection of lymph node metastasis but there is some limitation it fails to detect small metastasis and in some bulky necrotic tumor, they have enlarged reactive lymph nodes which are being picked up by CT, but they may turn out to be free of tumor. So sometimes this misleading finding can be there in CT. So what is better? Better is MRI because it helps in knowing the distribution and depth of invasion in the cervix then there is vaginal invasion best assessed with accuracy around 78 to 94%. They say it is superior to CT for parametrial invasion and with an accuracy of 75 to 90%. Now what is better than that? Better than that is PET scan. PET scan, it detects the retroperitoneal lymph nodes and other distant metastasis to the sensitivity of 75% and very specific around 98%. So this is one, if it is available in our center, it's always to go for positive emission uh, tomography scan. So what is the better than that is this FDG, fluorine 18, fluorodeoxyglucose PET MRI. This is a one-step staging for pelvic tumor and entire body for retroperitoneal and distance metastasis. High sensitivity around 96% provided this facility is available to the center. Now how do we diagnose and go ahead? So any patient with abnormal cytological examination, what do we do? We search for a gross cervical lesion. It is absent, very good. We go for colposcopy and colposcopy directed biopsy. If there is no lesion visible or entire uh, squamous columnar junction could not be visualized, then we go for endocervical curettage. If there is gross cervical lesion present, then we directly go for cervical cone biopsy. Now coming towards the FIGO staging. As we all know, uh, the FIGO staging uh, is there uh, since uh, uh, the update has come in 2018 and I'll be covering this FIGO stage of 2018 with an update. Uh, where we all know that stage 1 is uh, carcinoma strictly confined to the cervix. So A1, 1A1 and 1A2. Here we have, they have taken only stromal invasion to the depth of 3 and 5 millimeter. That uh, extension of 7 millimeter is not no more there now. So this is the newer thing which has been added over here. Now coming towards 1B, 1B1 and 1B2 was there where tumor is still in the cervix and the lesion is less than 2 centimeter. Uh, tumor still in the cervix, lesion is more than or equal to 2 cm but less than 4 cm. Now one B3 stage has been added to it. This is a newer one. Tumor measures more than 4 cm in greatest diameter. Mind you, we are still in the cervix. Now coming towards uh, stage 2, now the uh, you cervix, uh, the lesion has gone beyond the cervix in the vagina. So what is there? 2A1 is less than 4 cm uh, extent of the tumor. Uh, 2A2 is more than 4 cm uh, extent of the tumor. 2B is parametrial involvement but not up to the pelvic wall. 3 is again the um, uh, tumor has gone in the lower third of vagina or extend to the pelvic wall or hydronephrosis or a non-functioning kidney involving pelvic and periotic lymph nodes. So this pelvic and periotic lymph node, it was not there previously. So this 3C1 and 3C2, this is the newer um, entity which has been added in the 2018 FIGO staging. So pelvic lymph node metastasis only is C1 and periotic lymph node metastasis only is uh, C2. 
so uh, they they have now uh, added not only the clinical aspect of it like uh, the clinical uh, findings were uh, important in previous figo staging now uh, the they have added the pathological findings as well as the imaging mortality modality findings in the staging uh, they say that you can mention that 3c1 and 3c2 as r and p if the pelvic nod nodes are being detected pathologically it is p and if they are being detected radiologically it is r and it is to be written that the stage is being found like this then stage 4 as we all know is the uh, spread to the adjacent pelvic organ and spread to spread to the distant metastasis so this is the figo staging very important now we decide the management according to the stage so stage 1 a1 as i have already told you here we go for conization and type 1 hysterectomy i'll tell you later on also then uh, uh, a1 a1 no lv si and with lv si this is not there in the staging but when we go for management of stage 1 a1 we have to see lymph vascular space invasion whether it is there or not because here the management is going to get a change if it is not there only conization will suffice but if it is there we go for radical tracheotomy or type 2 radical hysterectomy with lymph node dissection so this is the difference now 1a2 we know uh, we go for radical uh, tracheotomy where the patient wants to spare her fertility or with hysterectomy and pelvic load lymph node dissection uh, if she um, doesn't want to spare her fertility one b1 we go for radical tracheotomy with type three radical hysterectomy with lymph node dissection and again uh, if the disease is more than 5 mm we go for the same straight way uh, type three radical hysterectomy and pelvic lymphadectomy here the role of radical tracheotomy is not there next now uh, 1 b2 b3 and 2a uh, hysterectomy with lymph lymph node type 3 type 3 uh, we don't go for type 4 and type 5 radical hysterectomy nowadays it is its role is very limited almost obsolete now uh, 3b and onwards we always go for a primary chemo radiation so this is how we are going to decide the management aspect of it so what is the rationale for early stage we all know that early stage carcinoma cervix is only has got the option of surgery if it is late if it is 3 and 4 uh, we don't go for surgery so we should decide we should get the tumor in that stage early stage so uh, if uh, there are other factors also which is going to decide the um, mode of management so what are those factors uh, we have diagnosed we have staged if there is advanced age if there is comorbidities if there is low performance status we go straight away with radiotherapy with or without chemo but the patient is young there are no morbidities there is preservation of she wants to preserve her hormonal and sexual function we opt for surgery now what are the surgeries available with us hysterectomy tracheotomy conization hysterectomy is with all these types and we are going to get a detail of these tracheotomy and conization so uh, what are the different uh, prognostic factors it will be definitely the stage of the disease certain things are not being included in the figo staging but we have to consider them when we uh, decide for the uh, surgical aspect of the tumor if the tumor is more than 4 cm it is going to carry a poor prognosis if there are lymph node metastases bad if there is lymph vascular space involvement then and it is again a poor prognostic factor if the stromal invasion is deep say more than 10 mm again a poor prognostic factor next 
parametrial extension, poor prognosis. See, uterine body is not being considered. Uterine body involvement in FIGO staging is not being considered. But they say that this, if this is there, then increased rate of metastasis is there. So we should consider, we should see whether uterine body involvement of uh, uh, is there or not in CA cervix. So um, histopathological, uh, again the uh, poor prognostic factor is adenocarcinoma. Uh, it has got a poor prognosis related to the, uh, compared to the squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, hemoglobin level again is very important. If the patient has got anemia, then there are high chances of local regional recurrence. Then again, very important factor is age of the patient. More the age, poor will be the prognosis of the disease. So what do we consider when we take, think of surgery? Uh, we have already uh, now know that our patient is in 1A or 2A. Uh, operable growth is there, small tumor is there, not fixed to the pelvic wall, there is no distant metastasis, physically fit uh, uh, to tolerate such an aggressive surgical procedure. She wishes to avoid the long term effects of radiation therapy. Then the growth is radio resistant. Typical candidates include young patient who desire to preserve their ovarian function, retention of a functional and non-irradiated vagina, and we go for uh, these women who have got pelvic masses, pelvic infections, chronic salpingitis, extensive bowel adhesions from the previous peritonitis or endometriosis. So these are the factors to decide to think of uh, surgical management in these patients. Um, here again, I'll say that uh, expertise is also a big uh, um, factor to be seen as a person who, who, who are we going to call as an expert? A person doing surgery, it, she should be experienced enough such that he or she performs at least 15 radical hysterectomy per year. So this factor is very important. Then patient's preference, what does she want? She wants surgery or she straightway wants to go for uh, radiotherapy. That is also very important. Next. What are the principles? Principles is we have to see the primary lesion and we have to see the potential site of spread also. They should be evaluated properly. Then what is optimal therapy? Optimal therapy, it is either radiation or surgery alone. Very important. So pre-treatment staging of the disease is very important. We should not make our patient to land up with chemo radiation later on once she has already gone through surgery. We are going to uh, make her land up in an extensive surgery such as uh, radical hysterectomy with all its side effects and complication. And now we are saying to her after getting that uh, histopathology report of her uh, gross specimen, what we took took out from the surgery that uh, the lymph nodes are positive and margin is having disease in it and she needs an adjuvant chemo radiation. So the basic aim of treatment is lost. So this is very important to decide pre-treatment the staging of the disease and accordingly go. Either decide radiation or decide surgery because morbidity is going to be very high when both are combined. So we are not going to give to the patient. The aim is not that we are going to offer her only survival. It, which it should be a disease-free survival plus it should have a better quality of life. If quality of life is poor, then there is no, uh, the aim is uh, of our treatment is being lost. So think about it and decide properly. Now advantages of surgery. Possible ovarian conservation and preservation of sexual function. Shortening in fibrosis of vagina, it can be limited if the woman is sexually active. Pelvic relapses, they can be successfully cured 
if it turns out to be there by radiotherapy later on. Surgery allows the status of lymph node, the most dependent variable associated with survival, to be assessed accurately. So if there is a chance, one should go for surgery because we can assess the lymph nodes very nicely. It is a preferred treatment option in young women. Now what is early CA cervix? It is comprising of CIN1, CIN2 and CIN3 which is pre-invasive disease and microinvasive carcinoma stage 1A, then stage 1B and 2A. So we are going uh, to discuss the surgical management related to these stages. Now coming to, before we go ahead with the surgical, main surgical aspect of it, uh, we should know what is a lymph vascular space invasion. Um, here again, uh, for those who are sleeping, I would like them to get up. And uh, please listen, a lymph vascular space invasion is very important. Uh, here I am going to recite a shade again, for which is very apt for a lymph vascular space invasion. Patta patta buta buta hal hamara jane hai. Patta patta buta buta hal hamara jane hai. Jane na jane, gulhi na jane, baakh to sara jane hai. So it is there, lymph vascular space invasion is there, but patient doesn't know, her body knows. Patta patta buta buta sabko patta hai maha par hai. Patient doesn't know and the surgeon doesn't know. And then what happens, the patient turns out to have it and we don't go for lymph, and lymph node dissection along with it. And later on patient has to go or face the um, Chemo adjuvant therapy. Chemo adjuvant chemo radiotherapy. So, this is very bad. So, uh, what is lymph vascular space uh, invasion? Is uh, the lymph vessels and the uh, vessels they are going to get uh, that tumor cells in it, and which is very early to come. We should always ask our pathologist to comment on LVSI if we are dealing with a patient of stage 1A1 because 1A1 is has got two mode of management in it. One is with LVSI and one is without LVSI. So when it is without LVSI, it has got only 1% of lymph node dissemination and recurrence. Therefore, one should see because the only conization and free margin or extrafacial hysterectomy, if, if done in such patients, they are going to give very good results and overall survival is said to be 70% to 90%. Yani stage 1A1 and no lymph vascular space invasion. We are going only conization and if there is free margin or uh, patient doesn't want to retain her fertility, we are going for simple hysterectomy which we all do at our place and the survival will be 70 to 90 percent. Therefore, we want to go for LVSI. Now, what is LVSI? How do we uh, get it? It is through HNE staining very easy or we can ask to the pathologist to go for immunohistory chemistry ISC. And also done nowadays uh, without pathology by uh, radio mix the extraction of meniable data, data for medical imaging. Different, different images of CT and PET and uh, um, MRI are being taken together and they are analyzed and then they comment whether, what is the uh, percentage of prediction of uh, uh, LVSI in those images and accordingly the management can be decided. What are the different uh, surgical procedure available? Uh, conization, tracheolectomy, when we think of fertility sparing, radical hysterectomy, laparoscopic assisted hysterectomy with vaginal radical hysterectomy and lymphadenectomy. So um, now we are going in the surgeries. Uh, we are dealing now with uh, pre-invasive stage where the treatment of choice CN1 and 2. Uh, here the treatment of choice is LEAP and LEDS loop electrosurgical excision and uh, loop electrosurgical excision of transformation zone. 
Now a cone by FC, here cold knife conization is done or we can go for simple hysterectomy. This is for CA in C2. When we go for cone by an FC, what is the benefit we are going to get? Squamocolonar junction is poorly visualized and high grade lesion are suspected, then go for cone by FC. This plastic epithelium, if it extends into the endocervical canal, Cytological findings showing high grade dysplasia or CNC2, microinvasive carcinoma found on direct biopsy, endocervical curata showing high grade CIN, and cytological findings showing adenocarcinoma in C2. Now, what is cervical conization? It is defined an excision of a cone shaped or cylindrical wedge from the cervix that includes the transformation zone and all or a portion of the endocervical canal. It is used, I have already told you. Next. Conization is performed preferably with a cold knife, laser or electrosurgical. Preferred one is a cold knife. Complication rate is uh, very low, 2 to 12 percent. It is hemorrhage, sepsis, infertility, stenosis and cervical incompetence. They say at least 50 percent of the endocervical canal should be removed without compromising the internal sphincter. Now, here is of CIN3. Indications for cold biopsy of the cervix are Diagnostic in microinvasive carcinoma and therapeutic in a patient with CIN2 or CIN3 if she is unreliable as a candidate for close follow-up. There are two ways of conizing the cervix. For histopathological examination, a cold knife conization or CO2 laser is used via cone. Two clinical pearls before I start. Do not sound or dilate the cervix before conization because it disturbs the cellular pattern. Secondly, take a black silk stitch at 12 o'clock as a marker for the pathologist to map the lesion. Cervix has been painted with Lugol's iodine which clearly demarcates the Schiller's positive lesion. First, the cervix is grasped and steadied with two tenaculum forces on both sides to avoid hemorrhage. Alternatively, the cervix can be infiltrated with dilute adenaline insuline or hemlock solution. Then, using a regular cold knife, a cone is cored out of the cervix. The cone can be broad base or narrow base depending on the extent. The bleeders using figure of 810 Weichel sutures or spray cauterize the bleeders or apply Monsell's solution or paste or left alone or be covered with stormed off sutures as shown here. Post-operatively, watch the patient for tetanus toxoid. Complications of cone by fertility. The cone is analyzed as follows. It is cut into 12 to 15 blocks radially. Each block is used to make 5 slides. Thus, a total of 75 slides are made and case of CIA. Diagrammatic representation. This is what is uh, we aim for taking out a cone shape um, uh, biopsy from uh, the cervix, and it is being taken in two steps. This uh, electrosurgical electrodes in different say sizes and shapes are being used. Patient, uh, it is an office procedure, not uh, uh, general anesthesia is not being given. Uh, in lithotomy position, this is how we go uh, to take the sample or biopsy. First, the uh, electrode is being taken nine, at a right angle 90 degrees and only 3 to 5 mm of uh, specimen is being removed. Then we go inside in the canal and take out the remaining disease portion in the cervical canal and hemostosis is being achieved like this. Next. 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 
here uh, i'm showing you how it is being done in a live patient see we took out, took out uh, first uh, specimen then this is the second and this is how the hemostasis is being achieved this is leds loop excision of transformation zone swap holding forceps vials with local anesthetic a dental syringe cotton wool swaps the lead loop and the ball point of a cautery iodine or acetic acid solution and formalin a spatula and sponge with needles for preparation of the removed specimen with a large vial loop the procedure is diagnostic and therapeutic the cervix is once more examined to make sure that the operation is feasible for using diathermy an electrode is placed onto the patient with lignocaine and adrenaline is used for local analgesia the anesthetic is injected at the 12 3 6 and 9 o'clock position hereby taking care not to place the needle too deeply at 3 and 9 o'clock to avoid intravascular injection during diathermy any smoke is removed by suction through the pipe in the speculum for orientation the lead loop is kept briefly at the end point of the cutting action starting at the 3 o'clock position the loop is moved towards the 9 o'clock position It is then taken back and cautery is continued from the 9 o'clock position making sure to include all iodine negative tissue of the transformation zone. The loop is replaced with a ball pointer for hemostasis. Any bleeding can be stopped by cauterizing the wound bed and the edges to the swap holding for uh, this is how it is being done with CO2 laser. so what are the treatment available for adenocarcinoma it is just the same as with the cnc2 squamous cell carcinoma uh, treatment of uh, early stage disease figo 1a1 and 1a2 risk of pelvic node dissection no more than 1% for a1 first 1a1 uh, 3 to 6% for 1a2 for evidence suggest that there is no need to remove pelvic lymph nodes when treating a1a1 disease uh, pelvic lymph node should be removed if 1a2 is there um, now the options have we have already discussed uh, we have to see uh, the specimen after cone biopsy if it is having negative margins and no lymph vascular space invasion we can only go for observation and if she pers pers the patient doesn't want to do it then we can go ahead uh, with the hysterectomy plain hysterectomy simple hysterectomy extra facial uh, if the patient has got positive margin or uh, on cone biopsy we go for radical tracheostomy or repeat cone biopsy this is when the patient wants to spare her fertility if lvsi positive radical tracheostomy and lymph node dissection for patients with negative margin 
but LVSI positive lymph node dissection with or without sentinel lymph node mapping. After childbearing is complete, hysterectomy may be considered who have, uh, we, they can go for uh, either um, a simple um, extrafacial hysterectomy if they found to have on follow-up persistent HPV infection or abnormal pap test. Now, before we go to uh, radical tracheolectomy, uh, I would like to tell you what is sentinel lymph node mapping and biopsy. What is sentinel lymph node? It is the lymph, earliest lymph node to get the metastasis. So, uh, when uh, the CT is not showing that lymph node involvement is there, when uh, PET scan is not showing CT involvement, uh, lymph node involvement is there, still we have to search for lymph node metastasis because that is going to alter our mode of management. If we go for operative surgery and if lymph nodes are positive, total aim of doing surgery is lost because if para uh, pelvic lymph nodes are positive then the stage becomes 3c as we have seen and over here the treatment of choice is radiotherapy so this is a recommended one uh, to know whether uh, really lymph node metastasis is there or not what we do is we do a pre operative mapping by using an injectable dye patent blue endocyanin green or radio apex substance like technetium uh, 9 uh, which will uh, on mapping that uh, uh, thing will become blue or green or it will be uh, radio fluorescent will be seen and picked up you do a biopsy of that and uh, if you are doing it intraoperatively do a frozen section and see some tumor cells are there or not and if they are not there then only go ahead with your surgery or what we can do is we can do a, a laparoscopic mapping pre-operatively. Uh, take a biopsy, uh, send it to the pathologist. He will tell you whether um, lymph node metastasis is there or not. And then we decide the exact mode of management. See, in a recent meta-analysis, prevalence of uh, SLN metastasis for early cancer is as high as 21%. The uh, sensitivity of uh, this mapping and biopsy is around 94%. Negative predictive value is very high, 91 to 100%. And false negative rate is very low, only 1.5%. But better results of the trial are still being awaited. The advantage is we can avoid systematic lymph node um, dissection uh, if the patient uh, is not having this uh, biopsy positive. It also allows a search for low volume metastasis. This low volume metastasis will uh, tell you whether the patient wants an adjuvant therapy or not later on. So, uh, what is radical tracheolectomy? Uh, it is uh, in women who want to preserve their fertility. Uh, it involves resection of vagina um, from the, the vaginal portion of cervix is being removed. Uh, one to two centimeter of vagina is removed and medial portion of the cardinal and uterosacral ligaments is removed. It is being assisted with a um, stitch at the level of internal os uh, so that the patient can have pregnancy uh, later on. The criteria for selection is stage 1A1 with LVSI 1A2 or 1B1. Tumor size should be less than 2 cm. There is limited endocervical extension. Histology is other than clear cell carcinoma, neuroendocrine tumor or sarcoma. No deep stromal infiltration, that is, it should be less than 10 millimeter. Pelvic lymph nodes, they are free of metastasis. The patient is desiring of preservation of fertility and there is no other known infertility problem. So, uh, this is the video of... Uh, um, radical tracheolectomy done laparoscopically and beautifully uh, shown by uh, Putambekar sir. See, essentially the removal up to the internal os from the external os of the cervix. This was a 24-year-old female patient presented with invasive squamous cell carcinoma and the staging was 1A2 
it was decided to do a nerve sparing trachelectomy. As per the NCCN guidelines, this was a correct indication for doing a trachelectomy. The question is, why nerve sparing? Because it preserves the sexual function and the bladder function completely, which is the most essential thing that a lady wants. This is the anatomical representation and this is how the entire roadmap of the pelvis looks like after the dissection completely. So the procedure started with having an uterine hitch because we cannot use a manipulator in such patients. A posterior U-cut was taken, commencing from the right side, going into the rectovaginal space and dissecting the entire rectum completely away, laying between the two layers of denonvillous fascia as we do it for any kind of radical hysterectomy. The peritoneal cut was then extended on the left side, medial to the infundibular pelvic ligament and then was carried downward right up to the uterosacral ligament. The idea of doing trachelectomy is not to do less but to do more with less morbidity and that should be the principle which should be followed. The next step was to dissect the pararectal space and taking the uterine artery at its origin using the two clips. When we do a nerve sparing trachelectomy invariably, it is said that the amount of uterosacral removed is much less. The Okabayashi space is then dissected, remaining medial to the ureter and dissecting the hypogastric nerve. We also dissected the S234 nerve fibers, which are the parasympathetic fibers, and one can see the rectal branch, which was preserved in this patient, thereby preserving the integrity. This is the hypogastric nerve, which lies medial to the ureter, and all the branches going towards the uterus and the cervix are then severe. The nerve is further traced right up to the bladder. One can see the nerve on the medial side. The basic principle is to cut all the branches which go towards the cervix so that only the branches going towards the bladder are well preserved. You can see the branches. The deep uterine vein is always taken medial to the ureter as compared when you do a non-sparing because that helps you to preserve the hypogastric nerve and the pelvic splanchnic nerves. The further dissection allows you to go into the yabuki space and thereby dissecting the nerve further and preserving the bladder fibers. A combination of sharp and blunt dissection should be used so as to lateralize the nerve. Thus, another deep uterine vein which comes from below is also taken medial to the nerve. The same kind of dissection is then done on the right side. The nerve is dissected in the Okabayashi space and this nerve is then completely separated out. The vein, deep uterine vein, one can see is again being ligated medial to the ureter and the branches which are going towards the cervix are cut so that the nerve is further lateralized. One can see the nerve fibers now going into the bladder. This is the Okabayashi space wherein the final nerve fibers enter into the bladder. You can see on both the sides the hypogastric and the inferior hypogastric plexus completely preserved. Once the posterior dissection is complete, the anterior dissection is begun by taking an anterior U-cut going from one round ligament to the other and dissecting the bladder. So this is the left-sided round ligament. The bladder is further dissected off and one can see the ureter and the nerve going right into the bladder. We then close the vagina using a 2-O vicryl so that there should not be any spillage of the, of the tumor inside. Once this is cut, then the uterus is now taken completely retrograde and the internal os is removed. When you take out the internal os, a fully scattered is incited in the cavity of the uterus so that we cannot take an anterior posterior stitch obliterating the cavity while suturing the uterus back to the vagina. The peritoneal covering is then restored so that almost the anatomy looks normal. This is the specific anatomy is essentially the removal up to the internal os from the external os. This was the uh, nerve sparing laparoscopic uh, radical trachelectomy. Uh, here uh, I would like just uh, highlight uh, what is a nerve sparing. Uh, what previously what uh, used to happen that uh, no autonomic nervous system of uh, bladder used to get sacrificed while dissecting the lymph nodes and uh, the paracervical and parametrial tissue and patient uh, used to have a lot of uh, morbidity regarding the bladder dysfunction.
retention or tonia and uh, hypotonia of bladder retention of re urine repeatedly so the quality of life what she had after surgery was really poor and therefore the concept of this uh, nerve sparing surgery has come in now with the laparoscopy and without in open surgery also so fertility rate they say after radical trachelectomy is around 40 to 70 percent and live birth rate is around 70 percent and we have to do a cesarean section in these patients um i'll just go fast now as the madam is saying that i am short of time so uh, the we go directly to the radical hysterectomy um radical hysterectomy as we all know for uh, the stages of uh, 1a1 1a2 1b1 1b2 and 1 uh, 2b2 till b2 2b2 we can do it the pioneers of radical hysterectomy are these one i'm not going to just show them and now i'm i'm not going to name them the john clark was the one uh, who had done the first uh, radical hysterectomy ये फर्स्ट रेडिकल हिस्ट्रिक्टी फिर ये हमारे वर्दाइम्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वी वॉट वी डू इज हिज टेक्निक ही हेज कम आउट विद अ पेपर इन नाइनटीन ट्वेल्व ऑन रेडिकल हिस्ट्रिक्टी एंड फेमस टेक्निक ही हैज इन्वेंटेड विच वी आर फॉलोइंग टिल नाउ ऑल मॉडिफिकेशन हैज बीन डन बट originally it is what i is what we do then the frederick shota was the one who had come with radical vaginal hysterectomy technique later on uh, this is uh, meigs uh, who had done modified the verdams hysterectomy by adding more extensive pelvic lymph adenectomy uh, later on and what we do now is uh, modified uh, meigs uh, verdams hysterectomy uh this was the invention no i would just want to say this was the invention of this nerve sparing was done by him uh haidi kazu oka bayashi uh i'm sorry uh, for these person not taking their name properly i hope they are not alive and <laughs> unki aatma mujhe pareshan nahi karegi so this was the one uh, who had come with the tokyo method and in which uh, they have what they have thought is crucial component cutting only the vascular part of the cardinal ligament while preserving the autonomic nerves within the new part of cardinal ligament this was the tokyo method which we follow now also the daniel uh, dargent was the first one to cam come with uh, minimal invasive uh, like laparoscopic radical hysterectomy and uh, he has done first successful radical vaginal tracheolectomy also um, preserving the fertility of women so now this is what is the concept of a radical hysterectomy Di diagrammatically shown uh, we should know all the spaces these spaces are very important space of radius uh, pre sacral space uh, para rectal space and para vesical space so these two para vesical space we should go here we should go here here and here and if we do a uh, extra facial hysterectomy we are here very near to the cervix if we do a type 1 type 2 hysterectomy we are here somewhere midway midway in the cardinal ligament and when we go for a type 3 hysterectomy we are here in very much lateral almost as lateral as to the pelvic wall so this is the basic concept of all the types type 1 type 2 type 3 radical hysterectomy now here, here there are different classification peaver rudledge classification querlo moro classification uh, the surgeon they follow uh, these one or these one whichever they like types are type a b b1 b2 c c1 c2 and d me d1 d2 the classes are 1 2 and 3 and 4 here in short is the overlapping and the treatment which the classification suggest accordingly here i cannot go in detail because this is beyond the scope of this lecture uh this is type 1 next uh, another type of classification by gynecological cancer group of european organization research and treatment extra facial is type 1 modified radical type 2 radical is verdams or meigs hysterectomy type 3 which we do nowadays 
Extended radical type 4 is only for recurrent diseases and partial excentration type 5 in which there is uh, excision of part of ureter and part of bladder is obsolete now. We opt for radiotherapy over here rather than going for this kind of surgery. So, uh, extrafacial type 1 hysterectomy, we all know, we do everywhere. This is what we do for benign diseases also. Second, type 2. So, this is for type 2, uh, end block removal of uterus, cervix, paracervical, paramaterial and paravaginal tissue to the pelvic side walls, bilateral removal of uterosacral ligaments as much as possible. Uh, for premenopausal women, ovaries are usually not removed. Ovarian metastasis, they are rare in absence of lymph node metastasis. So, intraoperatively, if we feel that there is a need for irradiation later on, the ovaries may be transposed out of pelvis in the retroperitoneum above the pelvic brim. Radical type 3 hysterectomy, Vardayams or Meeks procedure, there is a wider dissection of, uh, of parametrial tissues almost up to the lateral pelvic wall and mobilization of ureter and bladder as well. Vaginal cuff 2 to 3 cm is removed and it is always associ associated with the bilateral pelvic lymph and 2 versus 3, Janandu, 4, 5. Okay. Aage. This is the um, video of laparoscopic radical hysterectomy. Going to demonstrate a case of laparoscopic radical hysterectomy. Our patient is a 53 year old para 3 living 3 with a biopsy proven stage 1B1 cervical cancer. Uh, we have used three ports and a vaginal manipulator. The first step in our surgery is bladder dissection. The UV fold is lifted and incised using the harmonic scalpel. The incision is now being extended bilaterally to open up the anterior leaf of the broad ligament. This is our first step as it helps us to assess the operability of the case. If the cancer has spread to the bladder, we will not be able to separate the space and thus the case is then unsuitable to proceed for further surgery. But in our case, this case is operable. As you can see, with adequate traction, the carbon dioxide gas enters the planes and helps us fasten the dissection which is continued till the bladder is taken off an adequate length of the vagina. Now, we proceed to opening up of the six avascular spaces of the retroperitoneum. The incision is extended from the lateral end of the right-sided round ligament. The peritoneum incision is continued up to the sacral promontory. As we lateralize this peritoneum, we can see the peristaltic movement of the ureter. The dissection is now continued lateral to the ureter. The first structure, once we start dissecting the lateral pararectal space, we can now see the external iliac artery. The dissecting plane is lateral and parallel to the ureter. While dissecting between the ureter and the external iliac artery, we can deeply then visualize the internal iliac artery and uterine artery is the first branch of the anterior division of the internal iliac artery. We are now dissecting in the loose areolar tissue and dissecting off the fibro fatty tissue and now we can see the internal iliac artery and the uterine artery arising from it. Just lateral and deep dissection, lateral to the uterine artery, we can now see the levator ni muscle being dissected and the obturator nerve is now visible. This is the pectineal ligament which we can now see. Now, we are lateralizing the ureter to dissect into the medial pararectal space. The medial pararectal space contains the inferior hypogastric nerve. In our method of surgery, we after dissection of the bladder, we then dissect all the avascular spaces and delineate the uterine artery along its full course. As we all know, the uterine artery has a characteristically tortuous course and now we are delineating all the fibro fatty tissue of the uterine artery. In the method that we are following, we keep the uterine artery along its entire course all through the surgery because at the level of the ureteric tunnel dissection, if we give a traction over the uterine artery, it will help us in easily de-roofing of the ureter. So as you see, we are dissecting along the entire length of the uterine artery.
we are using the harmonic scalpel all through this dissection. Adequate traction from above as well as from below is being provided. The loose areolar tissue is separated by, with blunt dissection and wherever vessels are being suspected, sharp dissection is being used. A window is just created below the ureter now and now we are proceeding to delineate the ureter. We now proceed with dissection on the left side. Again, from the lateral end of the left-sided round ligament, we open up the lateral pararectal space. The peritoneum incision is extended up to the sacral promontory. As you have noticed on the right side as well as on the left side that we are doing this dissection, the pararectal space goes ahead and meets the paravasical space. So these spaces only for namesake have been dissected into various spaces, but otherwise they all join finally. Here, the ureter has been medialized. We can see the peristaltic movement of the ureter. Dissecting into the lateral pararectal space now, the external iliac artery is now visible. The lateral pararectal space is also known as the Latsko space, whereas the medial pararectal space is known as the Okabayashi space. The uterine artery can be seen here, and we now proceed with the dissection along the course of the uterine artery to delineate it up to the level of its entering into the uterus. We now lateralize the ureter and dissect into the medial pararectal space. A window is now being created. The ureter is dissected along its entire course till we reach up to the level of the ureteric tunnel. We are now giving an upward pressure. You can see the traction that we are using using the uterine artery itself. It helps us in deroofing the ureter. Precaution is being taken to maintain the vascularity of the ureter itself. We are separating off the fibro fatty tissue. All along the entire course of the uterine artery, it is being dissected off. We have now lateralized the ureter and dissecting the lateral paracervical and paracolpus region. Here we can see the whole length of the uterine artery and below it the whole length of the ure ureter. Now we are opening up the rectovaginal space. An incision is given between the two uterosacral ligaments using a harmonic scalpel. The uterus is acutely antiverted and the peritoneum is opened up. This facilitates the opening up of the denonvillous fascia. We have to remain above the fatty tissue of the rectum and below the posterior vaginal wall. Once we are in the right plane, the dissection is continued till we achieve an adequate length of the vagina. Here we can see the space being adequately dissected off. We are now opening up the posterior leaf of the broad ligament and joining it to the lateral margin of the denonvillous fascia that we have opened up. This will open up all of our spaces as we, I had already mentioned earlier that all the spaces finally join up together. Again on the left side, we are opening up the posterior leaf of the broad ligament and joining it to the opening of the rectovaginal space. By doing so, we come to coagulate the uterosacral ligaments on both the sides. We always have to remain above the fatty tissue as we all know the fat belongs to the bowel. The uterosacral ligaments have been coagulated. On the right side, we are dissecting the region of the ureteric tunnel. Dorsomedial to the ureters lie the branches of the uterine vein which have to be carefully coagulated while dissection in the ureteric tunnel. We are pushing the bladder down as much as possible and hence we now see the ureter is far down. We now proceed with the hysterectomy. 
using a bipolar the ip ligament and the uterine artery on the left on the right side are being coagulated similarly on the left side we are coagulating the ip ligament as well as the left side uterine artery the uterine artery is being coagulated at its origin of the lymphatic and the vascular supply to the cervix as well as to the vagina here we are using small pulses of the current and dissecting of as much as the vagina vesico vaginal space as possible to gain adequate vaginal length you can see how beautifully it is dissected even using a bipolar shearer the uterine artery has been taken and similar to the dissection on the right side the para cervical tissue para corpus has been taken the vagina has been opened and we take a circumferential margin all along the vagina to open it up completely excuse me doctor shri giri as you can see almost 2 cm of the vaginal length the time we are okay. going to demonstrate a okay. we will not go into detail complication uh, we will i will just uh, uh, go ahead with uh, the slides remaining slides and the indication of adjuvant treatment are ca cervix stage 1a to 1b and 2a they initially treated with radical hysterectomy and pelvic lymph adenectomy if they happen to have these high risk factors then they need the adjuvant treatment the high risk factors are positive pelvic lymph nodes or positive close margin and or microscopic parametrial involvement high risk group concurrent chemotherapy and pelvic radiotherapy is being given um intermediate risk group is uh, where these features at least two of them should be there uh, more than one third deep stromal invasion uh, lymph vascular space involvement and um, a tumor size more than 4 cm they are given 42 46 to 50 centigrade external radiation after 4 to 6 weeks of surgery and if uh, low risk any no uh, factors are there then no need to go for uh, adjuvant and therapy a uh, five year overall disease free survival has been identical in uh, this study surgery versus radiation equal um, the follow up follow up uh, uh, is very important here just i would like to narrate one share for follow up sir so, ma'am bolu na <laughs> the share uh, goes uh, like this um, भूल गई मैम ने टोक दिया ना बीच में जल्दी जल्दी करो करके next the follow up is like uh, first follow up up to 6 weeks assess the response two monthly follow up after one year four monthly after second year six monthly till fifth year and annually thereafter मेरे पास से गुजरकर मेरा हाल तक न पूछा फॉलो अप के लिए बोल रही हूँ सीए सर्विक्स आपसे बोल रहा है मेरे हा मेरे पास से गुजरकर मेरा हाल तक न पूछा मैं कैसे मान जाऊं वो दूर जाके रोए तो हमेशा अपने सर्विक्स को हेलो बोलते रहिए फॉलो अप रखिए से हाव यू हाव यू हाव यू key points are radical hysterectomy with lymph node dissection is the classical surgical option for the treatment of early cervical cancer up to stage 2a1 radiation may be used for every treatable stage of cervical cancer radical tracheotomy is increasingly popular as fertility preserving surgery for stage 1a2 and 1b1 disease laparoscopic access is the preferred one for treatment where adequate training and equipments are in place what my uh, take home message is prevention is better than cure